I loves me some one degree mm, of Chunky B. Now, I just have to make a comment about Chunky B. Have you ever seen him looking so good? The panel then includes actress Lady Kazan, comedian Chunky B, and Playboy TV host Julie Strain. Chunky? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> Guys, I want to tell you something. I don't know who you are, but I love you. I dig you. I love the fact that you guys are dialing in. And all you Sean uh, 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 Klitzner fans, thank you. You YouTube, YouTube people jumped on board. We challenged Sean and said, hey, get us X amount. We owe him a steak dinner right now. Absolutely. And, or and, some ass to glow. <laughs> And I'm going to get there. You guys, welcome. You know me. I'm Chunky B. You are one degree of Chunky B in the garage of love without hesitation. Please give it up for the executive producer of love. He goes by the name of Gary Adler. Thanks, Chunky, for that warm welcome. And thanks, folks at home. And listen, if you don't mind, if you're going to do your shopping on Amazon, yes. right, go to our website, click on the Amazon button. It costs you nothing, and it contributes right. to the show. Right. Exactly. That's it. And we are, we did get uh, some finances in, and we did go to Andy Davey, our wizard, the newest wind, wizard of the knobs. <laughs> and he's like, wait, I'm getting paid? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Even though we don't have we don't have a camera on him tonight, we can hear him. Yes, and, finally. Um, Andy, thank you for the apparatus of love with our new camera stand. <laughs> the yeah, that's, of love. that's pretty cool. I didn't yeah. bring that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's at home. Hey, you guys, if you're gonna drink and you feel like getting your quack on, you go to Venice Duck. We've got John Henry uh, Binder. Thank you for the beverage. Christian Warner, you guys are rocking the uh, Venice Duck, and we are so proud that's because right. they are at Dodger Stadium right now. The number one beer at Dodger Stadium, Andy. Yeah. Really? And check this out, people. I've got goosebumps. We've got a new sponsor. Yes. We've got a, a new fan of the show, and he's like, hey, listen, I've got this product. It's not that new, I found out. Okay. But it's slowly taken over the planet. The U.S. of A. is grabbing and grasping and loving the fact that Astra. No. Look at the sign back there. Yeah, yeah. As, Asta. Yeah, Asta there it is. <laughs> here's, what's, here's the problem, Adler. We mispronounced it last week. Yes, we did. Okay, it's and we Asta. heard from our sponsor, and they were like, "Dudes, nice try." Yeah, but check this out. They even got you know something. I'm not saying that you're going to be a better golfer, and I'm not going to say that uh, you're going to have a cleavage and play tennis, but this Asta Glow is really, really good stuff. And I want to show you something. Once you go to their website, okay, just look it up. It's A S T A Glow G L O W. I'm Asta glowing yeah. right now. Check this this bottle out. One cap a day. Don't do two. One cap a day. Bada boom, bada bing. You're gonna lose some weight. Don't over moisturize. Check these these pills out. And once you look on the the website, everything's legit. Everything's God, I organic. hope we're not liable. No, 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 no. Just this is gonna case. be. You know no, what I'm saying? The people, we're good. The people at Asta. No, are good. The people at Asta Glow really got, got their act together. I heard. Right. And check this out, people. <laughs> they got the new little pushy thing right there. The pushy right. Thing. Right here, I'm gonna do it right here. Oh yeah. my God, I feel better now. I feel better already. You're over moisturizing. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> look at the tip of your nose. Okay, hold on. You know hold what, on. actually, you look a lot better. Here's the deals. Before sun, during sun, and after sun. And Asta sun. Asta sun. And when you're driving your Asta mark. There you go. Just I Asta. Love I love it. We'll you tell you. Thank you, um, our, our, our new sponsors. And you guys, go to their website, buy some of this stuff, and you guys are you guys going to be a fan for life. And go to the Chunky B thing. They're going to set this whole thing up. Enough about our great sponsors. Can we talk about an unbelievable guest yeah, we're, we're about on to have. kind of a role here in the film business you know what well, i mean i don't know what's going on yeah. you do something as our viewership goes up yeah our clientele our guests are like Shit, yeah. Yeah. plus we're on getting it. a little smarter which is weird i know don't, let's not be we're not going of that. after the low-hanging fruit anymore i'm gonna bust it out right now i'm gonna just mention a name i'm gonna mention guys i need your undivided attention oh my god my face Get is angry. dancing i feel <laughs> i feel younger seriously <laughs> I feel like making dun, dun, dun. Can you please give your undivided attention to a guy that's in the movie business 
and I'm telling you, in the movie business. Yeah, right. He is not in the lobby anymore. No, 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 no. This guy's not ripping tickets and saying, enjoy your show. Yeah. Have some popcorn. Big round of applause for Robert Katz. Yes, in the garage of love. You Fun. know what? Can I just start off jump by in, saying one in. of my oldest friends in Los Angeles and proud to know him for a long, long time. You were telling me uh, that you guys like strolled into town in, from different cities, but about the same time. That's right. And you had uh, multiple be beverages at like one of the coolest spots down at the beach uh, at the um, Baja Cantina. Baja Cantina. Yeah. Multiple. <laughs> Funny, yeah. you and I probably stood next to Chunky 700 times. I was there right when you guys were there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I was the cool one with the hip bag. You know where else he was? That with the colostomy bag? Yes. <laughs> See, yes. That's amazing. I was still <laughs> I wearing that. <laughs> shit used to he dig it. Like, that guy's got a lot like, of the thong and the, You did the not wear the You wear the fanny pack, bro? I wore a fanny pack. You rock that per, shit? Yep, 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 yep. What was and in it? I'm just a kilo. Curious. <laughs> oh my I God. believe that you, shit. you guys, if you were at the Baja Cantina, you know exactly what was in there. Yeah. And what about um, Pine Mountain Logs? Pine Mountain Logs. At the, the Venice Bistro. At the Bistro, yeah, remember? Yeah. Oh my God. He how was there I, every fucking how, time. Dude, I was up there playing harmonica I know. with the Gila Monsters when they were jamming. If, the, if it wasn't Pine Mountain Logs, it was the Gila Monsters. Um, okay, enough about our past. Let's continue talking about our past. Let's talk about this guy's past. Yeah. Hey, Cats. Can hmm. I call you Cats? Yeah. One thing I dig about you is your fucking resume. Oh. Let's just bust out a movie, a little, just a little horse flick by the name of Seabiscuit. Yeah. All right, you tallied up $87 million to make that movie about a horse. And you cashed in at $148 million at the box office. That is money making. That's success, bro. That is success. And let's keep Go, going. Keep going. How about Crash? You were too cheap. You rallied up $6.5 <laughs> million. But you got close to 100 million at the back end. Phenomenal numbers. Let's go with the illusionist. 17 little million dollars. And who was in that? Some big names. Edward Norton. One of my favorites. Paul Giamatti. At the end of the day, 88 million dollars. I just want to say that those two are cool, but Jessica Biel was 19. Oh, <laughs> let's get into that. Yeah, in I'm a little get bit. Into that. So we're gonna get into that. Write that down. Yeah. So here's the thing. Just so you know about Jessica Biel in that particular movie, I had flown to. Um, we shot in the Czech Republic. We shot in Prague. And my first day on set, I arrived there, and Jessica Biel comes riding up on a white horse. In the scene, literally, hops off the horse in like this flowing, amazing, incredibly flattering outfit. Nineteen. Oh my god! How and come I'm seeing said, this in slow motion? She said, "We need to ditch my mom." <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on! And go party. That was your first job, and that was my first night with her on the set. <laughs> and she was the. I've worked with a lot of super cool actresses, but she rocked. Really? Hard. Yeah. Well, let me keep amazing. going with your resume, and we'll get back to the. Uh, uh, okay. For, I can't on. believe it. For legal reasons, you're telling this story. I, that, <laughs> for legal reasons, <laughs> the story. There's stories I'm not yeah. telling you. <laughs> okay. Just a little flick by the name of uh, Law Abiding Citizen. That's right. Okay. You uh, you dropped in 53 million, mm -hmm. and at the back end is 127 million. Now hold this thought before you say anything. I think we did better than 53 in the U.S. No, no, no. That's that what was you, that, that, that was your budget. Oh. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when your friends are watching right now and everybody in Hollywood wants to know, you've got the powerhouse, the biscuit, the crash, the illusionist, law abiding citizen. But what we really want to talk about is Cinderella Rock. Let's get into it, Robert. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more about this Cinderella Rock that America deserves to hear. The world. Okay, <laughs> how do you know about that? Like, nobody knows about that. That shit's in bankruptcy all over the place. Like, Bank of America owns a piece, MGM owns a piece, Sony owns a piece. I cannot put that film back together. And the weird thing that you bring that up now, which is some weird voodoo shit that you know how to bring that up, is I've recently been trying to put it to back together. Now that I've said this, one of your 15,000 people probably works for one of those companies who will go, oh, oh, we should tangle it up and fuck that guy. Because it's going to be, it's, it's, a, it's tricky. Um, By the way, we tell everyone else we have 30,000 listeners. So yeah. well, we told you oh, the truth. No, well, 50, we <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. If the mic is on, we're lying. I'm a producer, so if it's 30, it's really 15. It's like, how much do we make? Oh, we only made 15. Sorry about that. Oh, <laughs> man, that's incredible. Well, I, the reason the voodoo happened was because I told Chunky. But 
because I remember when I got to town with Robert Cass, the first time I met him, he's like, yeah, I'm producing this movie. I'm like, how the fuck are you producing a movie? Like, I'm just trying to find an apartment that'll take my dog. You know what I mean? In Van Nuys. Right, right. And, this guy uh, comes into town. He's a producer yeah, right off the bat. It's unbelievable. It was an accident. Did you know people? What the, what the fuck? I didn't know anybody. Oh, my God. Such bravado, man. I loved it. You know something? Now that I'm, you know, our new best friend, uh, Robert Katz, I see Knack. I see Knack. You and, see him? No. I, do, a do little you? bit. No, I, I swear. Some, just your, your body you know, language? He looks like my dad. Does he really? Yeah. Is that Except right? not as tall. But yeah. close, yeah. but close. Yeah. Short jokes, Mac. Yeah. Short jokes. It's, we know Robert's. We'll tell, we know Robert's uh, cousin. Yeah, we play golf with him, which is how Gary and I know each other. We know each right. other because the Floridians and the Chicagoans, which are the two yep. like the Sharks and the Jets, we <laughs> met each other That's here right. because Knackman went to Gainesville and knew the Floridians, yep. and then I was in Chicago and had the Chicagoans, and we right. actually the two gangs got along. Yeah, and merged and, we and merged partied hard and partied. Like we were 19, 21, because you we were, were damn were. close. <laughs> we were. It was, you know, what's funny. It was just, and I was just thinking about this today. It was like around the time, like when you watch Swingers, right. that's when we were here. Yeah. Exact Swingers was a big deal yeah. for us when we were here. We were like, yep. fuck, yep. why didn't we make that goddamn movie? I know. I know. Because we did the same thing. We all took separate cars everywhere oh we went. Oh, my God. Yeah. In the hopes, yeah. in the hopes of oh. hooking. They hit it perfectly. Oh, my gosh. So you got something uh, knocking on the door in November. I think it's going to take over the planet. I saw the trailers. I've been, you know, getting a hubbub about it. You've got to be really excited. The movie's 33. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Okay, just let's break it down for the common folk that watch this show. Yeah. 33. 33 minors? Yeah. Okay, but some people are like, no, no, no. There's a bunch of minors. There's 33 days. No. Nope. Break down the math. So um, in 2010, August 5th, uh, 33 minors were about a mile underground and a rock the a size mile. of two Empire State Buildings fell on their head and trapped them in the mine in a way that the odds of finding them were zero. They couldn't go through the front door of the mine anymore um, because the rock was so hard you couldn't drill through it or get through it and the mine was so unstable and fairly unsafe that they couldn't get through. So typically what happens, and it happened in Mexico I think a year or two before these guys got trapped is a bunch of miners got trapped in a mine like yeah we can't get them out they just sealed the entrance to the mine and put up the flags that was and it considered the mexican miners dead wow and then they eventually all died inside the mine <clears throat> and when these guys got trapped and they realized that they had this enormous piece of diorite trapping them there was no way out they couldn't take the ramp back up <coughs> So the government was on the fence of what to do. The families all freaked out and made a big deal about it. And the government got involved and said, well, we have to do something to save them, which was not typical. Um, not typical in the mining industry where 12,000 miners die every year. Um, is it, does it have anything to do with social? Did social go a little crazy on the miners? No, not really. really? It, it was nobody really knew when it was happening. It was just like Chile. It was in the Atacama Desert. It was nowhere. It was a two hour plane ride north of Santiago in the driest desert in the world. Nobody gave a shit. Right. So the families did. And the family showed up and was like, you have to do something. You have to help our families. And the, the, the company wanted to push people out and say, we're just closing down. No one's allowed in. No one's allowed out. Don't talk to the media. The family and one of the, um, the sister of one of the miners made a, started making a big deal about it and the minister of mining came up and decided he's like look we're going to do something about this and he talked to the owner of the mine and the minister of mining had only been on the job for three months he didn't he'd never even been in a mine could before. you imagine could you imagine you got a new job you're bragging everybody and all of a sudden you got 33 people and by the way the title of minister yeah you know yeah, no, exactly he needed a lot of prayer it was it was weird and it was unfortunate and they figured the only way they could get him was to drill from the surface of the earth. A mile? A mile down. Yeah. It hadn't been done ever. And there were a lot of issues with it. The odds of finding them were so slim. Uh, first of all, the when you drill down, it's like if you imagine taking a straw and putting one straw on top of another straw and topping another straw and then try to touch the ceiling with it, the straw is gonna bend. Right. So when they were going into the earth with these these drills that were about that big, they were drilling down trying to find where the miners may or may not be alive in a refuge that that may or may not be where the maps that were 100 years old because this mine had been around for 100 years were all inaccurate. 
So they were poking through the earth trying to find these guys. And for 17 days, uh, they had 10 drills digging. Damn. And the drills started breaking down one by one. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It, was, it was too much. It, was, it hadn't been done. And one particular drill, uh, by luck, by just luck, found him. And what happened was... No, 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 don't give it away. Oh, no, <laughs> spoiler they, alert. It killed him. It actually... Yeah, spoiler it, alert. It, it, it drilled down and speared the mind. The drill oh, no. came in and it was, it was, blood. It was terrible. That's crazy. And so they, they had no food. They had enough food for three days. Um, and uh, it didn't look good for them. It didn't look good for any of them. And then once they, I mean, we all saw the story. It was, I think it's the second most watched live event in the history mm. of television. 1.5 billion people Damn. watched the miners. And the I next, by the way, is Honey Boo Boo. Just, I just wanted to really. That are you are you going to belittle? <laughs> this? We've no, got a professional. Yeah, I believe that. Andy, that is true. That is Andy, that is true. Andy and I talked no, no, about no, 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 that. No, 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 no. Is that true? No, Mr. It's World Cup soccer, and then this. Okay, I apologize for the sophomoric fucking. Executive producer, we're trying to. Have All a right, I know. 30. I'm in the moment. Stop. Let's get back do you into like, it. Do you contractually have to call him executive producer when you're addressing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brady does. does. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's like <laughs> you yeah. are. It's like this is the best. <laughs> By the way, of all the interviews I've ever done, I, honest to God, it's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't He's, join in with these people. It's the PBC, wow. right? It's wow. got to blow you away. Can I just? Can I? So, yeah. when I talk to you, do I? Executive producer Gary. No, you don't I have to do Gary. that. Minister no. is fine. Minister. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, no, that makes yeah. sense to me. I get that. It's more casual. All right. Let's continue with the story. Okay, Ignore you, me. How'd turn get, my camera off. Yeah, yeah. How did you get involved with the project? Uh, they were having trouble making it. Script wasn't right. Mike Metavoy uh, reached out to me and said, "We we need to get there, and we're not there. the The production plan wasn't working. The script wasn't working. Uh, they only had one cast member in place." And they needed to figure it out. So um, someone that I know, a very, very, very well-known producer, Robert Greenhut, um, had recommended me for it. And then uh, Robert Greenhut, who did like Big, League of Their Own, Working yeah. Girl, Hannah, or Sisters, like he has the, per the resume that I wish I had. He's like- That you will have. Legend. That well, you will I'll have. I'll never have his resume. Oh, yeah. come on. No, well, never. Um, and he recommended me and they called me in. And, and, and the weird thing is I had tried to quit the show three times. For different reasons and the 33 is interesting because they all believe it was a miracle that they were found there's less than one percent chance that they'd ever be found wow and forget found alive just found and 33 there it's a very religious very faith-based country chile south america is a lot of it's very catholic it's and they believe it was a miracle and when they counted how many guys were down there was 33 which is the age of christ when he died Mm -hmm. And they looked at that as an instant miracle. For right. them, it was like, sure, we're here. It's a miracle. Like, whatever. So every time I was going to be like, you know what? I can't be on the show. It's, there's too many problems. Because it's the miracle. Me. I would be my gas tank. And I hand to God, oops, this is true. My gas tank would, out of nowhere, be like 33 miles to empty. Or I would pass a <laughs> speed sign that said, you're going 33 so miles So you were hour. getting those little symbols, those yes. hints. And yeah. You're I, not going anywhere, but you're going to make this fucking movie. And no one has ever heard this from me before, but it's weird. I just haven't shared this with anyone, but I feel so comfortable here. Right <laughs> hey, all right. I feel so safe. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the Venice duck dog. <laughs> quack, 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 quack. <laughs> it's warm in here, and I've had a little bit of Venice duck. Yeah. Um, no, don't keep, keep yeah, please. it. And it was, it was weird, and I would go, I would literally be dry. Uh, it happened three times that I drove in to tell Mike, I just, I have another offer or I'm not sure we're going to get there and I'm not sure I'm the right guy. And, and, you know, I didn't think I was doing the best job I could do. And for whatever reason, and I was going to go in and say, look, we can find someone who can figure this out. I can't, I haven't been able to figure it out yet. Or I just hated everybody at the particular moment. Right. Um, the number 33 would flash somewhere, somehow. And the three times I went to quit that number 33 appeared and I was like, mm, not today. Wow. And so it worked out, you know, it's um, sure did now when out. you when you go in when they say look, you know Basically, you know, we need help mm -hmm. in many different categories mm -hmm. Like where do you go? Are you working from home? Are you going into an office somewhere? I think I mentioned I go to Jesus <laughs> <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> Jesus help me. Yeah, um, uh, I went to an office. I went to uh, Phoenix is a company that Mike Metavoy has run for a long time right. Black Swan was I think they're big hit so you went this. under his umbrella 
I went over there. He hired me. I met the investors and I basically told them they were going to lose. It wasn't going to work out well for them for a lot of reasons. It was an expensive movie to make. And they drama. say, how do we make it work out well for yes. us? Okay. And so I gave him a take on the script because uh, what I where I thought it needed to go. And I gave them a take on how to make the movie, how to cast the movie, who to, um, who to hire is the right kind of crew and what the tone should be of the film. And then had many conversations with the director and ultimately my job is really just to support the director. Okay, speaking of, I don't mean to cut you off. No, please. Speaking of, we're, director, um, yeah. you know, Donald Trump said, what are you doing getting a, a Mexican woman that's got no name? But dude, hold on, I made that part up. <laughs> Check this out before we go Can over. Can I tease something? Yeah, tease. Because we're going to take a break something. real quick. Okay, listen. Yeah. I'm going to tease. I'm going to ask this question as okay. a tease. Okay. And we'll take a break. Okay. Is this Antonio Banderas's Pulp Fiction? That's deep. That's deep. Let's That's stop deep. there, Andy. All right, Andy. we're going to be right back. Robert Katz. Hey, you guys. Chunky B. One degree of Chunky B in the garage of love. And you know if you want to get your quack on, you go to Venice Duck. And I'm not even kidding. This is a good beer. Tell your friends, don't be afraid to get your quack on. Dude, this, actually, this is good. actually a really good yeah, beer. It's fucking great beer. <laughs> You're so lucky. Oh, oh shit, I'm still recording. Hey, you guys, music provided by Play Up Music. That's playupmusic.com. <laughs> Robert Katz, I'm the producer of The 33, which is coming to the theaters November 13th this year. I'm uh, happy to be on One Degree Chunky. B. B. <laughs> Perfect. 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 Um, so, uh, Travis Spencer is uh, the original Wizard of the Knobs, and he is the one that generated the energy to actually put this podcast together. And uh, he and I used to hang out uh, over at CBS. And he's like, Junkie, come on. You just, you just get the... And he came over here, got all this equipment. We went online, had it all mailed to us. And he put this thing together. But now he's finding his, his in, inner wisdom out in the desert. He's in... Um, Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree, he's, living in his... What's that little trailer park called with all the sound studios? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's, you know, he's finding his, cool. uh, his inner writer, which uh, he deserves. He's with his, his gal. That they're a great, great team. And we, they have their own. He's had another. Yeah. He's got another podcast, by the way. And I can't yeah. remember it, but I'll. Apod I will look apod it up. No, no, no. He has another podcast now going on. Does he really? Yeah. Is he well, on just it? look up Travis Spencer. What's his uh, Twitter address? Uh, At Travis Spencer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your fucking Twitter address? Uh, mine is uh, Chunky B TV. Uh, Chunky B TV. And mine is uh, at Four Eyed Films. Yeah. Yep. That's yep, right. Yep. Andy, you got one. Yeah, and he doesn't. That's great. Oh, and he's a big blue square. Okay, not only do we have uh, Mr. Katz, Robert Katz in the Garage of Love, we still do have, I'm just so happy about Astroglow. Asta. Asta. Astaglow. Just Asta. And you know something? I'll tell you. And I want to let you know, do you remember a couple of weeks ago when we just first introduced the product? Yeah. The next day, the next day they called and said, listen, dude, you're pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. But you know, we just, yeah. But now we got it. We're winging it, Asta, man. Asta Glow. And it's, it's been, trust me on this. Guys, trust me, we're going to be laughing about this when everyone's got this yeah. stuff, okay? And we don't have a piece of the pie at all. Like, so we didn't even do, all of a sudden he brings product in here and we're like, no, 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 no. I didn't want to tell you. I didn't want to tell you. We're in negotiations. Okay, excellent. Yeah, yeah, we're in negotiations. Ask the guy. And these guys, are so, these guys are so great. They're so easy to get along with. Like, yeah. you just sell Speaking of great. The duck. There you go. Once again, if you want to get your quack on, you got to drink it. The Venice duck. Oh man, great, great beverage. And this and, particular one, the Agave Blonde Ale is my favorite. That's the mm -hmm. one they sell at the Dodger Stadium. It's not only good, it's good for you. Okay. Hey, Robert Katz, um, you're probably one of the coolest cats we've had in the garage of life. Hello, hit this what, symbol. What, what? Boom. <laughs> Professional oh, comedian. Yeah. <laughs> well. Okay, Antonio Warm Banderas. Warm mm. Hey, easy. Can you can you come back to the show? <laughs> Look at these little schoolgirls. Is there a difference in a warm comedian and a comedian? Yeah, oh, it's God, another yes. level. Oh my oh, God, really? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it was, a whole other level. Yeah. So anyway, a little bit warm more about better, right? <laughs> yeah, much better. Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't get to be on camera. Can a guy try to do a show? <laughs> can a guy try to do a freaking podcast here? You can. Only, you know what? When you're a warm up comedian, you can only be so funny. 
Right. You're you not can't be, be funnier right. than the host. Right. right. So it takes more control. Well, a lot more control. Discipline. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. But Cass. that did come naturally to Chunky, not being as funny as the host. I will say that. Wow. How can you soar like an eagle when you're hanging out with all these turkeys? Wow. <laughs> you you see what I mean? Wow. That was you funny. See, you see what I mean? <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get on with it. I what teased. made you grab? What about the all, tease? You want to throw the tease back in there? This is what we're getting at, right? All right, get on it. What was the tease? The tease was: oh. Is this going to be Antonio Banderas? You're right. I'm on. I'm on the right Pulp page. Fiction. His tra- Travolta Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Because you know the trailer, he looks like he's doing an amazing. He's a job. badass. Yeah, he's amazing. And the, the trailer's only like two something, but he looks like this may be like. Look who's back in town. Yeah, he's amazing. I mean, honestly, he. Uh, I've followed him since Mambo Kings and even before like Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, the Almodovar movies that he did um, before he spoke English and uh, he did Mambo Kings, he did Philadelphia, which are two roles that he played a little understated and he was amazing. I loved him in Puss in Boots. Um, fantastic, right? What about as the Honey Oats B? Is he the Honey Oats I'm B? I'm pretty sure he is. No, <laughs> you're making that up. No, uh, really? For that's sure. something like We that. don't do research here. <laughs> no. Anyway, yeah, yeah, we don't do any research. Well, oh, if he no. was the Honey Oats B, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is, I, I have to say, in uh, it, removing myself from wanting to support him, he's amazing. I think it's the best role. And a good guy? Yeah. Wow. He's um, he's a very good guy. He's excellent human being. And he... um. It's his best role since Philadelphia and maybe even Mambo Kings. He's unbelievable. His uh, what he brought to the role and how he played this character who's real. Like he plays Mario Sepulveda. Mario Sepulveda was on set with us and he was playing a guy who was wow there and spent hours and hours and hours and hours talking to Mario and somehow was able to kind of like catch what Mario is and uh, transmit it through this character he played and he's fucking great. Awesome. What about Blue Diamond? Lou's gonna get. Did you say Blue Diamond? Yeah, Blue Diamond Phillips. <laughs> or was we say Low Diamond Phillips? But in the listen, poker world? that's right, Low Diamond Phillips <laughs> in the Low hole. Phillips in the oh, hole. By the way, my original fucking poker game right here. Oh, Seventeen really? years before I met you, motherfuckers. Yeah, right on. And right on. you and horrible had... donkeys. I was playing with these aces. Yeah, and scra- <laughs> and and angry Scrabble. Angry, angry Scrabble. Scrabble. Yeah, yeah angry let's power Scrabble. one out. We would oh, say yeah. with an MBB. Medium, medium bag. That's medium brown bag. <laughs> medium brown bag. Is there any chance we can get back to the subject at hand? I, don't I want to know about Blue Diamond. Uh, he's awesome. Uh, by the way, Lou is a serious freaking poker player. Do you know that? Did yes, he know is. That. He's yeah, always he's, in the celebrity poker stuff. He's yeah. a big deal. Like when we were in uh, Chile, Lou found his way into more than one poker tournament. And I played with him a little bit. He's very good. He's also a very good cook. Uh, his performance is his best for sure, that I'm aware of uh, since La Bamba. He, he, See, this is what I'm talking about, Andy. Good. I can feel yeah. this movie's going to be a breakout for both of these actors again. This right. movie's going to yeah. be a breakout for this fucking show. Yeah. When the great Chunky B's going to hit the fucking big time because we've possible? got the finger on the pulse. Is well, you guys, why don't you guys come to the red carpet and see if you can do <gasps> your show what? live? What? And then I'll do not tease us. I'll bring the PVC. Just, just, we'll, get we'll get real cameras. We'll paint it red. Come. No, we'll paint we, it red. No, we get real um, cameras for this stuff. No, I'll invite you guys. You guys can come to the red carpet. It's going to be the week of November thirteenth. I literally just Chunky got the B. date. I don't what? know when. This is like a whole, like, This is like a miracle. Man, this, this is, is a miracle. This is the R33. R33 is everywhere. See, wait. What's this? What's this? What's happening? We're paying it forward too. By the way, we're going to pay it forward. Lou's amazing. I seriously, Lou's amazing. Like the. Uh, it was surprised. Here's how Lou got cast. So we got called by agent manager, I forget which, and said, hey, would you guys mind taking a look at Lou? By the way, Lou is Filipino and speaks no Spanish, um, even though he plays a lot of wow. Mexican. Wouldn't have guessed that. No. Really? No. Yeah, there's a reason for it. There's a whole historical reason why Filipinos can look Mexican, but it's different. different show. It's a whole yeah. other meeting. It's a whole other show. We'll get Donald Trump on that. Um, and Patricia Riggin... Uh, the director called me after he popped in for a reading and said, oh my God, he just killed it. And he was in a rush. He's like, listen, I got like seven minutes and I got to get out of here. Do you mind if I, and he auditioned and his audition was like phenomenal. Wow. And she goes, I don't even know what role he's going to play in the movie. I have no idea what he's going to do in the film, but he needs to be in the film. So let's figure it out. And you got to watch the tape. And I watched the tape and I was like, oh, fuck. He was amazing. And he is, 
he plays Don Lucho, who is the guy who was in charge of all the miners when they got trapped. And his story and what he did is quite amazing. And he had a very difficult job portraying um, the real guy, Luis Azura, who was the leader of all those guys who struggled um, to keep them alive and to keep them focused. And Lou plays the dynamic parts of that character as good as he's ever played anything. I can't wait. I've got goosebumps. Same here. Same yeah. here. You know, bumps. We, did, bumps. we did joke about the director. And it, 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 she is... Patricia Riggin. Yeah, but let's talk about her because yeah, right, right, right. To be I, I, but about, I didn't want yeah. to belittle it with a stupid joke yeah, about yeah, Trump. Yeah, I agree. No, I agree. No, 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 that was it. No, please uh, go ahead. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. You're, you're siding with these guys, big guy. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm in the. Sorry, right, but you know better than to repeat I'm a horrible joke, right? <laughs> right. Okay, well, let's oh, just get on with it. Okay. Oh God, this reminds me of a joke. I got to tell you later. <laughs> okay, great. You already it's, told it to me. It's, it's about this. No, 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 no. What was the process, and why did you find this particular woman? Well, I didn't find her. Um, Mike Metavoy had found her uh, before I was attached to the project. And um, she directed a movie called La Misma Luna. In Spanish, she did it for a relatively very, very small amount of money. And she had this very um, specific ability to take stuff that could have been melodramatic and over the top and hold back just when it was going to be too much. So the emotions that she was able to drive out of these characters and the drama and the action in that movie made it pretty clear that she was going to be a good choice for this. She's super bright. She's super talented. And um, she turned out to be the right choice. Now, listen, I mean, yeah. this is this is a set with a bunch of men. Like, I can imagine pretty much all the men except for some of the right. wives who yeah. probably weren't in every Hot, single... Hot, sweaty, good-looking yeah. dudes. No, yeah. no, that's not, that's not my point. Oh, I thought you were going that way. How do you <coughs> command respect... Oh, from good, a, good question. A, an entirely male oriented set. Well, she was tougher than all of them really? by far. I mean, wow. she's like very confident, very clear about what story she wanted to tell. And she told that story and she was collaborative to the point where she would listen to what somebody had to say. And if it made sense to her and stayed within the context of what the story was, she was trying to tell. She went with that note, but if it wasn't where she wanted to go and became a side trip, to the intention of the scene or the character or the story, uh, she didn't bend. And she's super tough that way. And how was your <laughs> relationship with her? You came on after she was already on board, right? Um, my relationship with her was great. Awesome. And she what? 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 what, what, what? Oh, hello. <laughs> there had to be bumps in the road. Cut there is. There's dodgeballs. There's always um, bumps in look, the road. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's okay. If you don't want to talk always, about no, it. No, I, I can. It's always a little... Um, the relationship between a director and a producer always come ebbs and flows you know you have different a, goals no slightly it's not different true. Goals. No, no no we have the exact same goals okay um the goals are always let's make the best movie possible sometimes the way we see what it takes to make the best movie may be a little different yeah. um but we work together as much as we can and sometimes we don't agree and sometimes we do agree and um it's just the process and, that's uh, part of the deal, isn't it? Right. It's part of the deal. It's gotta be. Yeah. Really but you gotta fight way you gotta fight your way through it. Yeah. You yeah. know. It, it's it basically and I don't want to get deep it's here. Give but take. It's a paradigm. Okay. A paradigm, the definition of paradigm in my in my opinion is you have, you all have a common quest, yeah. the goal, but you have two different paths to get there. Yeah. And you fight your way to get there. And and sometimes I, it wasn't like it, it's I think that's an oversimplification of the reality of what it is. It's like we it's not that we would necessarily have different paths. It's like at different times you have different ideas. There's different beliefs of what the director thinks works or the producer may think work. And you talk it out and you try to come yeah. to a mutual conclusion. In this particular case, you know, in the end of the day, and I think with most films, like filmmaking is a director's medium. You know, in the end of the day, the director's got to have it dialed in and know what the director's doing. And the producer's there to support that person as much as they can. And if we feel like that person's losing the plot or losing the ideas or whatever, our job is to find a way to communicate with that person in such a way that we either get it back on track or understand that we've always been on track or whatever that discussion is. And it comes with um, a relationship like any relationship. And sometimes it can be really hard and sometimes it can be great. Uh -huh. And I think that Patricia and I had quite a bit of both. I think uh, that's important though, right? For a film. 
Because right. then the best ideas are coming. Right. Because if you all get along perfectly, yeah. you, you, you know, why do you need just one viewpoint of one particular thing? you got to have different angles, different, different uh, you do, thought processes. Let me just say that if, if um, an overbearing producer distracts a director from the vision of the film yep. or the director doesn't have a clear enough vision of the film, you wind up with a mess. Would you put yourself in that category as overbearing? Um, yeah, sometimes. Uh-huh. That's the truth right there, um, people. But sometimes... Listen, but I might shut this whole thing down right now. Because he's overbearing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. He's like, and I'm sick of both of you. And actually, I don't think this is a very good show. Right. And I have, no, I have notes. I have notes for both of you, Chunky. Do you... Are, do you, are you... Uh, are, is part of your job to deal with the bottom line? In what regard? With the finances. Like, are you fighting people that are going, look, we can't shoot that scene because we don't have the money. No, my job is the opposite. My job is to find a way to shoot the scene even though we don't have the money. Nice. So love it. That's it's a like, love it. Look at that. Producer. Put that it, right on my fucking tombstone. Yeah. It, All honestly, right? like, my whole gig is, like, I my job is to support the director and find a way to make the impossible possible. Nice. And nice. It's a, love it's that. It's a real gig. Yeah. I mean, and so, unfortunately for me, or fortunately for me, because I like it, the buck stops with me on every single thing, budget, yeah. schedule, creative. It's all on me in the end of the day. So um, it comes with the pressure of the responsibility of being able to deliver a film that works and the pressure of the responsibility of making all the personalities work together and uh, put together a film that works even at times where I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. But the reward <laughs> is... Nothing. And let me tell you, you know, this. There are no rewards. When you look up on the billboard and you realize that Fuck. even though your name's up there, nobody can read it. It's really small. <laughs> it's you really know what I mean? Small. It's Something really... that you're missing the point. No, no, he's, not, he's, he's absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Actually, it's like the director's like, can you make the producer's name a little smaller? Like, how small? <laughs> legally, how small can we do that? <laughs> can you be grateful that your name is on the freaking poster? Uh, That's a quick you know question. I, I'm, not in, I'm not at that moment yet where I'm yeah. like, I'm still today, even though the film was like, we, we released a film in Chile. I don't know if you guys know that. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, heard. Yes. The and numbers on Chile are enormous. It's, it's fine. It has to be, right? We beat Mission Impossible. We beat Minions. We beat them all. Who and, like um, who didn't go to the movie in Chile? Well, you know we, something. You know what I mean. Here's we what I heard: seventy five percent of the market. Wow. Damn. Um, it's so it's uh, I just got the numbers for last weekend too. So we're two weekends in a row. I think we're the second largest film of all time. Um, which and, is cool. Wow. But course, are people coming out of the theaters happy and satisfied? Yeah, we've been. Um, uh, there's been standing ovations where people wouldn't leave. Nice. So, but it's you have to feeling. know that for Chile in particular, it's very emotional. This is about Chileans and this how is they the miracle, of man. Miners. And it's the miracle. Yes, it's, it's a miracle. Jesus, 30 Jesus is working for the miners. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Robert. I did read it in the paper that you guys had a rap party with the cast. At, you guys rented out a, a bar in Hollywood, and they kicked the whole cast out because it turned out they were all miners. Can we cut that out, Andy? <laughs> no way. Are we, we allowed to edit that? You get it? Miners? The miners? Can we uh, edit that part right. out? <laughs> I yeah. didn't even okay. get that. Hang like, on a I'm, second. Wait, wait. I, wait. I want to analyze this a little bit further. <laughs> no, that's, that's a not good How joke. long were you thinking about that? <laughs> Since he sat down. Really? Really? <laughs> really? God. No wonder why you're a cameraman now. <laughs> hey, Gary. Can I be <laughs> honest with you right now? <laughs> can I just say something? <laughs> you can come. Oh. What, 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 can Andy come? Of course, Andy come. I All don't right. think this shit exists. I got eighty six. I got eighty six <laughs> because of a minor joke. But we're gonna have. We to... might even bring Travis back from the desert. <laughs> yeah, we might have to work on your ship before you get there. <laughs> what okay, if we this... promise no horrible jokes on the red carpet? Or what if he just does a warm up? <laughs> yeah, I could do. I oh, want to warm up the red carpet. Okay, listen. Before we um, wrap it up on thirty three, yeah. um, I do ask people in the. Um, in there, uh, if they do have the power, I would love to be in your next movie as an extra. I'm not asking for a line. I'm not asking. I just want to be behind the scene extra. Can you deliver that for, and, and, and reach my goal in Hollywood to be an extra in a big movie? Uh, no. Sorry um, about you. I have my next movie starts in a couple weeks, so... Can we get a little you preview? Can, Do we? Are we not allowed no, to know I, about I that? I can't oh, say anything on. about it all. Bust it out. On. But I'm going to shoot in a couple of days in Los Angeles, a little bit in Chicago, Toronto. Can he and, warm up the set? No, I want to No, we to can't walk. have him do that. I, we need everybody it. to want to be there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, hello. Sweet Jesus. Even the miners. Oh, even my the God. Look at you. <laughs> Sorry. It I doesn't matter. I got to say, Chunky, is like, you're a funny guy. 
but I lost but you on the minor thing. Really, I, you like, know what? I, Despite the horrible joke, your skin is gorgeous. You, you do yeah. well. Like your skin Astra, is absolutely Astra. Astra. <laughs> Astra. Say it. Astra. I, swear, I, swear I do have a final question from Travis uh, Spencer. Lay it on us. The wizard of the. Can we just give all the symbol, please? Yeah, the wizard. Oh. The Not wizard you. Of the you're on blue screen. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's wizard. this question. Uh, uh, this is our old technical director, Travis Spencer. Can you please explain how the title of a good film like Employee of the Month can be used again two years later in a terrible Dane Cook piece of crap? Isn't there a copyright or something preventing that? Ooh, wow. Okay. I'm so happy you care about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you can just say no and then move I, on. I don't really know all the legalities, but you can use the same title. Sometimes... I think they, I think that was before us actually. Um, and the, the way we don't care. It's like, Oh, people get confused. Maybe buy our video instead of theirs. I, I don't know, mm. but I'm not sure how it works. I want to say thank you for being in the garage of love. You have got an open invitation and I want to say thank you for the invitation for the red carpet that we will be in attendance and we will dress up and we will act appropriately. Oh my God. We're going to look great. Yeah. This is going to be great. We're going, we're going to go big that night. We're going big. You might have to do some more PVC work. No, yeah. I like the okay. PVC. What yeah. else could you do to that? Right. It's gorgeous. Well, we're going to paint it or something. Uh, Robert Katz, <laughs> um, sincere, sincere thank yous. And we're gonna, um, you're going to be a reoccurring guest. Everything you do, we want to know. We want to like, be uh, okay. first to hear about it and first to watch We have a it. first look at Robert Katz. I always want to say. As far as podcasts go. Yep. Yep. First yep. This Exclusive. is my first podcast. Is it oh, really? Yeah. Really? Look at that. We are breaking records here today. I, can I tell you something? I of was course. like, I didn't know it was going to be uh, cool. video. Oh. No, I didn't know. Either. I didn't know it was going to be cool or video. I was like, oh, we're going to have a nice little podcast. And what it was. And Robert Knackman said, I got to tell you. These guys are good. They're really <laughs> oh, good. wow. It's a really good show. He's just and, greasing but, us for the next golf game. No, no. Yeah, well, right. Robert Nackson's very critical. Robert would honestly, Robert would go like, mm, yeah. Yeah, he would. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like, I know. He would tell the truth. No, it's like, I don't know. Um, but he said, yeah. you guys are really good. You guys yeah. are super entertaining. This is uh, Thanks, I, Robert Katz. super fun. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. And there's not a man that talks more on a golf course than <laughs> Robert Nackman. Yeah, yeah. He'll tell it. you what you're doing wrong. Every two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, good to have him with you. Yeah. By the way, do you want him on the red carpet? Do you think that'll help you? Oh, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's busy that night. Don't forget to drink the duck. And of course, Astra, Astra Glow, you guys, seriously. Um, and check out at uh, Four Eyed Films yep. and. Of course, ChunkyB.TV. And uh, hit me up at uh, Twitter, ChunkyBTV. Do everything chunky. Be and there. look up the 33 folks on yeah. YouTube. There's an official I, trailer. Yeah, yeah. and I go think ahead. What like do you the got? 33.com or something like that. Uh, there's trailers up. Come to the theaters November 13th. Uh, the movie's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. It's, awesome. it's like it's hard for me to like. I, I've never been out promoting a film and really thought the film that I was involved when. It, I just not the guy to like. Oh yeah, yeah, go. Um, but this film's special. That's awesome. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Katz, we are One Degree of Chunky B. Thank you. Tell your friends. Spread the word. We like you just as much as you like us. <laughs> <laughs>